What would happen if you put 50 player custom nations all in the same map, made their ideas using a draft where no one idea is repeated, then had the players pick those ideas one at a time? Which idea set would be the strongest and come out as the number one nation? Yeah, that's right, it's back! Habibi Daycare 2 is finally here after almost three years later, a multi-part series where every week we will spectate this 50 player lobby until one nation is just too strong. All right, we are now in, finally. It took, we're 47 minutes late, but we made it a 50 player custom nations game. It's supposed to be 54. As you can see, there is some dead zones because there were supposed to be players there, but they uh, didn't show up. They came, they, they, they're supposed to be another player in Persia. They're supposed to be a player in Kilwa. They didn't show up or they had technical issues or whatever reason. Also, there's supposed to be a player in Poland as well. Um, that being said, we are finally into the lobby. 50, 50 player custom nation. You guys didn't know this time we did a draft so the way it worked because if you guys know i did habibi's daycare one very like almost three years ago almost three years ago i did habibi's daycare where it was a max amount of points and anyone can pick any idea they wanted the issue with that was that many people picked the same ideas and we didn't get to see a lot of the unique ideas that are in the custom nation builder so instead what i did is i made 542 uh, picks, including government. So there's 54 governments. You can see the government picks right here. And people uh, basically drafted on a random order their ideas over the course of the last week. It took us a week of drafting through the Discord chat to do it. It was a lot of work, but it was finally done. And now every single person has unique ideas. That means that there's only one person with discipline 5% or discipline 7.5% or discipline 10%. You can actually take a quick look at ideas here like this. We can see here, there's this guy right here, the second Dutch expedition, he's over here. What culture is he? You can see his culture, he's Dutch culture. Okay, interesting. Um, shock damage received minus 15, monthly admin plus one. Gyp disengagement plus 20. Morale of navies 20%, fire damage received minus 15, yearly corruption minus 20, governing capacity plus 40, land leader maneuver. Drill loss, lightship combat ability. So you see these ideas. No one else has these exact ideas. And there is a, some quite interesting nations. We have here the creature build, the creature nation. This is one of the interesting ones that I was uh, excited to see. He has a combat. He's called creature because this is a creature build, and you'll see why. He has combat bonus and terrain of capital plus one. Army tradition of from battles plus 100%. Own territory dice roll plus one. Merchant one. Ship trade power plus 30. Ship trade po propagation plus 40. Yes, these are different. This one's mul multiplicative, multiplicative and this one's additive. So this one's better than this one. Morale damage from reserves plus 45. Embargo efficiency plus 40. Monthly fervor plus three. He can't use that because uh, reformed isn't a religion you can take day one, but he will go reformed later, obviously. Caravan power plus 20. I think he's also Prussian culture. He is Prussian culture. So that means that he can form Prussia at some point. And people can make formables. Of course, as a custom nation, you don't get new ideas. They're doing it for mission trees. And it was something that was recommended to the players is that if you want this guy is Czech so he can reform Bohemia, I'm pretty sure, after he eats Bohemia. But uh, basically, um, people took those cultures so they can form nations for their uh, mission trees. Uh, we can even see this guy right here. He's the Caliphate of England. He's English culture with a body religion. And this guy, he has some crazy naval modifiers. He also has goods produced plus one, which means every province that he has just has a flat one goods produced. Uh, it's right now blocked by uh, the development. But that means that basically every province that he has is like it has five Diplo Dev for free. Uh, this guy here, Valve, he has Monarch military skill and Monarch Diplo skill with 20 goods produced. But he has no military quality. He has 10 mis Merc discipline. I guess he's going to go Merc ideas to get uh, another 10 Merc discipline. Um, there's also someone with plus two ca uh, artillery shock. Where is it? Plus two artillery shock right there. This guy, Yugoslavia. Oh, dude, let me see his ruler. Joseph Tito. Okay, dude, he even got the middle name. He even got the middle name. <laughs> um, he went for province, war score cost, war score versus other religions, yearly absolutism, siege ability, plus two artillery shock. Uh, and oh my god, he actually did custom uh, names. 
Croatian snaking. Just like how they stole the entire Bosnian coast, the, coast the Croats excel at simply going around enemy forts instead of sieging them. This fails 90% of the time, but the 10% of the times it works, it's of great use to the Yugoslav nation. Bosnian artillery. The Bosnians have figured out that this long shooty stick we have just invented is more useful as a battle ram than as a cannon. It's used as such in battle that it's given the strongest artillery of the planet. Oh my god. Montenegro sleepiness. In an act of laziness, the Montenegrins opted to simply copy the Bosnian style of warfare. <laughs> Kosovo Rebellion. Kosovo has been in a state of separatism since the inception of our nation, and their violent protests have survived. The fourth Roman, uh, the fourth Rome is going for, uh, this is the guy that started in Thrace. I think he took the Ottoman government. He did. He has to be careful with decadence. Especially since he... Oh, he has Rise of the Ottomans. Okay, so he does get normal decadence like the Ottomans. He's probably going to also want to uh, want to form Room, which is possibility for him. Yeah, he can form Room, but he needs to take all of this land and also Ottomans and Byzantines need to not exist. We also can't forget the Indonesian nation of the Kendom. Is this, this how is you're playing the game? Man. The Kendom is playing the game like this? this <laughs> what? Is, yes, it is. <laughs> how do you see this anything? Is... He doesn't this need to, awful. he's just can. I'm just can. <laughs> this is this is how to play this game. I, what? I don't see anything wrong with this. No. Give me one question. How do you even put the pictures? <laughs> I can I I just uh, the can ah, mint well. the can mint mint guys. So now you God literally damn, can't see anything. <laughs> God You can't he's even play can. the game. So yeah, the players, the first 10 years, since they had to be less than 65 dev, some look bigger, but they're all 65 dev. Um, they have to now s try to expand. Some places are harder to expand than others. For example, you have uh, this player on the Moscow region. Um, he can switch to a Russian principality right away, but um, he is going to struggle to be able to form Russia and, uh, you know, go from there. But uh, some places are a lot easier to expand, right? Especially like you're in the HRE. It's a lot easier to expand because there's a bunch of smaller people next to you. People like France are going to really struggle to expand um, as well. This is the French Tuscany. Do you have custom na ideas? No. But um, he also is going to struggle to expand. So um, players like Castile, yeah, you have an entire region to yourself. There's no players near you. He has Lisboa near him, but I'm pretty sure this player doesn't have military ideas. He has discipline 2.5. He also starts as a Solomon Empire, interestingly enough, as Portuguese culture. Um, but uh, because uh, they're in this region alone, you can have things like France Castile warning you. Like I was saying, uh, the, the, he's gone for like a very, like a uh, defensive build. So not only does he have Fort Defense plus 50, I think he has also another Fort Defense modifier. No, he wasn't able to draft it, but he does have garrison size, garrison growth, Max is hostile attrition, attrition for enemies. So it's going to be really hard to take him down. I think he also has core creation costs on us. Yeah, so that means when if someone takes his land, they have to pay 60 plus 60% more admin to core him. He also chose the Eskimo unit types. Um, pretty interesting to see. Place on the map was chosen how other how we cho uh, choose places for other maps. Um, for other games, normal games, people basically, uh, when they signed up, they wrote five starting regions that they would like to start in, and then we basically chose them based off of balancing for the lobby. So, um, different people had different starting locations, they uh, they chose them, and uh, that's how we got what we got. Um, the Chinese nations have to be careful. Hopefully, Ming takes a reform here, because if not, then they're gonna be stuck. Um, they're gonna be stuck just drilling their troops, which is what they're doing here. Except for French Avenki, he is not. French Avenki with a with a different name. I think they also all are Confucianist because they did do Chinese Kingdom. No, this guy's a Step Nomad. This guy's a Chinese Kingdom and this guy's a Chinese Kingdom, which is actually really good because you do get territorial cores on China when you uh, take a province. Could have played in my in this lobby because uh, this isn't like the the, uh, the, the musical chairs. Uh, where there is no like prize or anything like that for anyone. This is just for fun um, But uh, I wanted to spectate like I did in the first customs nations lobby because um, You know if you watch Habibi's daycare one we spectated and we got to see how these builds evolved over time and which builds got better 
uh, if if you guys want to see me play in the next custom nations lobby uh if you're watching on youtube write down in the comments that you want to see me play and we will organize this lobby again but this time i'll play so keep that in mind write down in the comments if you want to see me play for now we'll just be spectating we have a turkish culture in germany the guy that's playing totally german city is is turkish okay that's interesting to see we have, like some really interesting religions we have abadi in england we have um uh, we have shinto in france we have shinto in tunisia we have abadi in in yemen we have zoroastrian in persia those are normal um we have shinto in korea a lot of people picking shinto confusion in okay that one's weird he's picking confusion here in the, the island islands uh, we have Orthodox and Shinto and Abadi in uh, India. Funnily enough, there's only like a couple nations that went colonial focus. Uh, the Kingdom is one of them. Uh, Portugal player is one of them. I think he went colonist in colonial range day one. Um, I can't really think of anyone else on the top of my head that has colonial ideas to start. This player right here, he is Tessalan ideas. Let's see. The great Tess. What's Tessalian society? I don't even know. The Great Tesselian Council consists of the smartest and most proven scientists. After Great Sikhism, Tesselians went their own way. And what religion is this guy? Catholic. Blood of the Old Swebi. This guy is full on LARP. Plus modifier minus 10. How, how cheap is his devving to start? Okay. The modifier minus 10. Base cost minor fire, modifier. Let's see. We also should have players over here. This guy has a minus 20. The Bingle, Bingle, not Bengal, Bingle has minus 20. How has that reduced his dev? Okay, he can dev pretty cheap right away. That's pretty insane. Minus 14. Wow. Okay. That's pretty good. It'll be interesting to see who's going to start the first player war. Also, it's going to be interesting to see how some players are going to expand. Because, like I said, some players are going to be stuck in certain regions. Like, for example, the Muscovy player. But he started by doing a war in Novgorod, and now he's fighting the Livonian Order, the same nation that Creature is attacking. Creature is also going for Livonian Order, so we're going to have to already have people disputing over land. I do have to say the base mission tree isn't the worst, right? You still have a dev cost mission. You still have a construction cost mission. You still have a morale of armies mission. You still have a, you still have a money mission for manufacturers that you build. So it's not like the worst thing, of course. It's not as good as just having like a bait like a really big mission tree um we also have to see who forms a nation first i i imagine the player that's on the denmark is going to be able to form denmark we did make um we did make denmark a reformable nation we did bug it though so you have to be swedish culture uh, all the danes are angry in chat i know is this guy jewish he's also jewish he decided to go for the festival of the shimchat torah first does he have uh no, he doesn't have unique missions. He does have minus 5 all power costs to start. And morale damage min received minus 15. These used to be bugged, but it's actually quite good now. Now, RB land is the one with 1.5% goods produced. Or not 1%, just flat. So every province that he has just makes more goods produced. You can see he's already making a lot more money than you would normally get in this region. Because every province that he has just makes so much extra goods produced. Uh, it's going to be pretty good for him here. If he can get gold, that'd be pretty good. We have here Eastern Polonia. Is he Polish culture? No, he went with Maharati. So he's trying to probably adopt the Manchu identity. What? Is he a horde? No. Oh, he went Manchu culture. Manchu, yeah. He has Manchurian culture probably so he can get uh, banners. And you can see, yeah, he has possible banners. Um, he has plus two goods produced. So he's already making 15. I think he has Golconda as well. So Golconda here is making plus six goods produced just by base of the province. It's weird that he didn't make this his capital, because um, then he wouldn't have the autonomy issue. He does have a cultural acceptance issue. You know, going Manchurian culture, yes, he can do banners now, but he is going to have issue with culture as unaccepted cultures anywhere. So the first player war has broken out. It's a offensive war. It's Harad versus Valve and Russ Weedin. So it is a player war, 2v1 player war. We do have a step nomad player here with uh, 85 cav to infantry ra ratio. So he is mostly cav. He does have to be careful. This player went for cav cost minus 20, raising power plus 40, uh, war score cost versus other religions. Uh, 
cav combat ability plus 10 cav fire plus one so this is going to be an insane horde at some point minus 20 cav cost just to start is already pretty strong takes a battle on the on the tiles on the flatlands he's going to get a plus 25 shock modifier he does have to be careful going up into the sieging of the provinces it is a show superiority war so he has to win battles in order to go he has expanded a lot to start but that is to be expected when you are a horde with a 666 starting ruler so totally german uh, ideas um republics need change in ruler why did no one tell me that it seems like well we established that rulers need to be elected we thought that meant everything for republics but what the f man why do i need to secure a stable round by not having one lifelong ruler <laughs> okay Imagine having to pay people. We just lied to them, telling them they will be paid in two years. But a few days before we have to pay them, we disband the regiment and tell them to cope. <laughs> okay. We allow women into every branch of this nation. Women in army equals children born for every army uh, service. Makes sense. That does not make sense. It's not honest, but it's it's not much, but it's honest work. Okay, this guy. <laughs> engaging but it seems sabaria so now this is a 3v1 they're 3v1ing harad savaria is here alone though uh the abdominal snowman dipak bagai wait who's that who's dipak the guy and why is he over here who is this nation oh it's Ma it's mango he's all the way up here for some reason and he's getting destroyed by the horde army to be expected and that's gonna be some more score for this guy because it is a show superiority war because he used this horde cb that's not gonna be good for this 3-1 they're now 3v1ing the horde into harad probably a good idea it's kind of sucks that he's getting 3v1 but it's probably good ideas considering he's a horde with insane cav ideas he's gonna be really insane if he's not if he's left unchecked kemri has chosen to get unique ideas as well undead workers i don't know what kemri is i think this is a reference to something this guy went full larp mode king of kings has awoken to see self-proclaimed kings emperors gods but there's only one king king of kings yearly prestige hawk legion it's a mummy larp it's mummy larp undead egyptian faction warhammer resurrection ritual so this guy went full larp i like full larp plus six splendor Fleet movement speed, not usually the most useful here. He does have possible wing to SARS, plus 20, on top of um, special unit force limit, plus 45. So this guy's going to have a lot of wing to SARS. A lot of wing to SARS. Jeez, so many wing to SARS. 20 he can make. That's more than his land force limit at the start. Both getting 4v1 here. Uh, they're now, if they consolidate all their armies in one region, it's going to be really hard. He went for aristocratic ideas. So he does now have minus 30 cav cost with 10 cav combat ability. It's going to be really hard for him to take it. Of course, uh, ideas are modded to be more balanced. So the ideas are all ideas. The idea is that all ideas are valid. It is also a 1 1 1 lobby, which means that you're if you take a mill idea first, the next mill idea you can take is in tech 14, not tech 10 like normal. Um, yeah, it's going to be hard for him to win this. I know I already said that. And now there's also another one. Valve is here. That's 50k troops all in Delhi. I think he's going to try to stab hit here, but it's going to be really tough for him. May the Chinese players are going for Ming while it's low mandate. That's quite smart. They have to expand. Are they doing separate wars or are they doing all one war? Separate wars would be better. And you can see that two of them are doing separate wars. While one, uh, well, well, two of them are in the same war and one of them is doing a separate war. And they really have to worry about this player. This player, I feel like, is going to be one of the scariest players. Already expanding super fast. Has 15 combat ability, regiment, um... Uh, also has banners, plus 50% possible banners. Rod really needs to do some kind of Diplo. He did just stab hit Abominable Snowman, so now he's alone. He now needs to move to the left to try to take a battle. He is now getting stab hitted out. No, it's not a stab hit. Someone is saying, give me max money, I'll get out of this war. Probably a good call to do that. Because then it will be a 2v1, which I think he can win as a horde. Enough to enforce, not enough to enforce, so he's taking this battle. It's going to be, I think he's going to win this actually quite hard with the Cav combat ability and 113 discipline. It's going to be really good for him. And it is a show superiority war. So there you go. Immediately wins a battle and the war score went from 90 to minus 24. So they can't even stab hit out anymore. I think Harad is actually going to come out on this on top. That's name is Valve has uh, the Paradox Interactive <laughs> icons.
And yeah, it's a lone French Evenki against this horde is it's not possible. And actually, they're not trading good. We have a special force limit of 60, so he has more Manchurian banners to start and 20% morale damage, but it's not really helping him against the 15 combat cav combat ability of Asai. He also has more troops on Asai. And without help, I don't think he can win this 1v1. It's gonna be really tough for him, especially still at war. Harad is now fully unoccupied. He is at max loans, keep that in mind. Losing 27 a month, he's dealing also with rebels as we speak, uh, but he's gonna still have to win a basically a 3v1 here. Still, those are the only two player wars going on. I didn't really expect much player wars. Now French Evenki's capital is being sieged. It's probably time to take max loans and take mercs to try to win this war. I mean, the least you can do is make him bleed. He does have positive war score from holding Beijing, but how long will Beijing hold? He is still trying to fight the Uzbek AI. Probably wasn't a good idea to attack Uzbek idea, AI when it's allied to Afghanistan, Great Horde, and Kazan. And now Uzbek is even sending peace deals, which aren't stab hits. AI can accidentally send stab hits, by the way. Yeah, we've seen it happen before. It's quite funny. Creature not expanding much here. To be expected. Uh, the more he expands, the better worse it is for the players around him. And he just got radical reforms. That's pretty good. I imagine most players are rolling for radical reforms day one. One of the weaker drafts that we saw was the Wayfarers, who went for like full trade ideas, which is funny, but uh it's gonna be quite tough to do things uh what religion did he go he's jewish he has one idea that's not working i'm not sure why oh someone died to ai already the lithuania player died to ai already so that's one person that died the first 10 years have passed though and that was the only player that died we expected more to die to ai i'll be honest because a lot of people did die to ai last time and oh harad is out of the war I think he sent a stab hit, but now he has to pay off 3,000 ducats of debt. You know, that's actually not the worst uh, because he does have 1,900 banked up and he's a horde so he can keep expanding. With that, Harad did win a 4v1 Giga Chad moment. And French and Venki now is taking max loans. No, he hasn't taken max loans. Probably should before Beijing gets sieged down. I mean, he has to siege Beijing. Does he have mercs? I mean, there's more mercs he can take, but uh, he is building more troops. He did just peace out Ming. Probably next week I'll try to get another commentator because I know YouTube liked the other commentator. It's more fun than just me casting alone too. So next week I'll try to get another commentator. But yeah, speaking of Bengal, yeah, it's a completely it's it's a completely drill based uh, quality. So he's gonna probably try to drill constantly. Move capital modifier minus eighty percent. That's a unique one. I don't know if it's gonna be that useful. Good for deving. It is nerfed in the mod, though, I do have to say. We can see Barbieland is continuing his expansion, making pretty good money to start, considering he got the plus 1.5 goods produced. And we have our second player death, this time to a player. And Manchu has formed. I, I noticed Chessland also. Pawn economy. Knights on the side. <laughs> this guy's a chess player. 0.5 goods produced. Pretty good. He's going for cav stuff. Oh yeah, this is the guy that's a horde inside the HRE. A step nomad inside the HRE. It's going to be quite interesting. A lot of land that he can raise. Going to be expanding quite fast. Players are going to be scared of that one. But he does also have custom one. Hi YouTube. During the pandemic, many YouTubers started making chess videos. Bringing the game new glory. Two bishop mate. As long as they're not the same color, two bishops should be enough to win. Two yearly papal influence, more horses, year, uh, horde unity, monthly war exhaustion, and possible Manchu banners. I think he's also Manchurian culture. A lot of people picking Manchurian culture so they can make banners. I do have to say doing Step Nomad, yeah, it is goofy because of the forest. But not only that, uh, you also have to worry about horde unity. So if you're not raising land, you're going to lose horde unity as a horde, which is a, quite a challenge as being a horde. Uh, like once you stop expanding, you're not going to get horde unity. So we're going to see what the players are going to do with that. You know, you're losing horde unity, so what are you going to do? You're going to have to probably change government types at some point. And then, yeah, so we did slot four players in this region. It is a bit excessive, but we do have a player war. It is going to be an offensive player war by New Valeria against Spice Girls. With the plus one infantry shock, I think on the shock phases, he's going to do some insane damage. Yeah, plus one infantry shock is insane modifier. What else did this guy get? Morale damage, re-election cost... Uh, global naval engagement, heavy ship combat ability, naval army tradition, navy tradition, reinforced speed, admin policies, recruitment time, 
Speaking of the Kingdom, the other one in this region, he moved his capital all the way to the Japan region. Okay, I think he's... Okay, yeah. He's trying to go to the New World. Okay, this is what I expected. The Kingdom player is trying to go to the New World so he can use his Siberian frontiers in America. And you can see he's already in... He's already in this part of the New World. Okay, all he has to do now is move his capital. He already moved his capital once over here, which means he can now move it to the New World. That's going to be really powerful. That's really insane. He's going to be so strong. And this is one of the guys with plus one infantry fire. So that's also going to be insane. Having that plus one infantry fire and all that dev in the New World. New World is going to be really, uh, really crazy for the players to try to take it. I have no idea how powerful artillery shock is. Like, no idea. So, uh, that's why we have... There's one person with plus two and there's one person with plus one. And he's continuing his expansion now attacking Kiva, which is part of Uzbek. Raswadin finally ended his war with Uzbek and did get to expand. But Yugoslavia is going to be one of the scariest contenders. Are any players uh, great powers already? Bengal is already a great power and White is already a great power. I think White is in China and Bengal is in India. So we already have some great powers. I think Bengal is already has already dev the bunch. Yeah, already 109 dev clicks on Bengal. The power of development cost modifier on top of having a 666, which everyone has, and also infra infrastructure ideas. So players are, with the dev costs are going to dev a lot. And New Valyria with Daenerys Targaryen, he's going to be killing. Yeah, he has 95 here. So that is going to be the end of Spice Girls. Most likely. Feels bad for Spice Girls who went for Colonist first. You probably want a mill modifier first, this player, or at least a naval modifier first so you can hold your land. Uh, but because he didn't do that, he is actually going to die first to the player. This is our third player death to the player on Valyria who did go for the infantry shock plus one first. Power cost minus tw 10 here on French Banana. He went for it first. Again, that, that is probably the right play. We can check how much he's devved here. He's only devved once. Honestly, I feel bad when players died because they spent a week drafting their ideas and like try to thinking and, you know, uh, thinking what they should do next and what to do in this lobby and then they die. It's kind of sad. Harad now fighting here on the border. Valve is trying to hold on a hill's tile. So it's going to be really hard for Harad to move forward. He also has Lahore occupied by Valve. Probably might be a good idea to try to do that. The truce break might have went bad, and actually they're going for the battle now. This is on a flatland with a river crossing, so if he doesn't have the maneuver general, he will be taking a minus one. Uh, yeah, it's a minus one on flatland. Still pretty high discipline. He's losing due to horde unity. This is the struggle of being a horde, I told you guys. You're going to lose horde unity if you're not constantly raising. He's going to win this battle, though. Seems Yugoslavia fell for the same trap that Rasvedin fell for. He's now... Fighting against AI that has 80k troops, 34k on this side, uh, on this front. This is going to be really hard for him to win against AI. The player has already unified Portuguese region. He can form po Portugal? No, it's not a reformable nation. Um, did he even pick a Portuguese culture? Yeah, he did. So he can't reform Portugal. I think he's already started his colonization. Yeah, he's going for the colonial game. You can see that the player went for colonist plus one to start as well as 40 range. One thing I noticed is a lot of people pick the same col colors. Like, for example, totally German city and creature have the same color. That's going to be really confusing. Um, you know, AI Rebellion, Watchers of the Wall, and French Tuscany all pick the same color. Also going to be really confusing. Oh, and we also have the first reformed nation. So this guy formed Denmark. We have a Jewish Denmark. So now he gets the full Denmark mission tree, but he still has his ideas, his unique ideas. Just got his Siberian frontiers. Let's see if he moved his capital again. Yes, he did. He moved his capital here. You know what that means? Siberian frontiers everywhere. He doesn't need the Diplo for it. As you can see, he is lacking a bit of Diplo. But there you go. He's now starting the Siberian frontiers all over his capital. He even picked a really good province to start the colonization because he can do it to one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six provinces. And now we can see Ouroboros clan. Does he have custom ones? He is, um, he's the one that has client states. We do have Nakamura 3000 ELO te teachings. Another chess reference. A lot of chess references. He's going for the Japan uh, focus, but keep in mind that the since he is a um, 
since he is a, sh a, d a daimyo, a d a daimyo, 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 he can get the the shogun can click the where is it this one, which gives monthly autonomy change and all the daimyos plus 0.25. One of the most painful additions in the latest pass in domination. Oh, reformed Bengal has now been reformed. And he's now Bengal with Bengalese ideas. Let's see how many times he's clicked dev buttons already. He has already dev 220 times. He's already number two GP with 220 dev clicks. Okay, this guy's gonna dominate the region for sure. And Harad in another player war. This guy just doesn't stop fighting player wars. Who decked this one? It is Harad that declared it on 74, so probably wins a couple more battles. He wins like two more battles and occupies like a couple provinces. He can peace out. Another player war, man. This guy is just non-stop in player wars. This time it is going to be, let's see the sides here. It's uh, Great Serbia AI Rebellion and Potato Crusade versus Watchers of the Wall and Chessland. It seems Chessland is getting partitioned here. He just took a separate peace deal, it seems. Oh no, Watchers of the Wall left him. He's now abandoned. And this might be actually our sixth player death. It is in Chessland. Rest in peace, Chessland. He's probably not going to make it to get that plus 50 points. Bengal pieced out for provinces and max money. So he's just focusing on his internal development. He's going to be expanding really fast. And now Harad is alone in a 2v1. It seems Raswadin is back fighting in India. It's interesting to see Raswadin fighting in India despite not having a way to get to India because he's being blocked by his ally. Punjab, uh, Valve, or Harad just non-stop fighting player wars. We love to see it. Slavia did not, ended up getting out of the coalition war. So he got out of it successfully. He did form Persia. So now he does get the Persian bonuses. He also has the unique Persian government reform. Pretty nice. Um, but on top of that, he does, of course, keep his Yugoslav ideas. So he keeps his ideas. It's Joseph Tito has formed Persia. And Harad has peaced out. Harad has pieced out of against a Domino's Snowman. He gained two provinces from that war. Probably was a stab hit. Probably was a stab hit, yeah. Someone does have plus one cavalry shock. We'll see who has a plus one cavalry shock. And there we go. Uh, banana, French Banana is still sending stab hits for this war. Fourth Rome is close. He can stab hit. He can stab up again, but he does have really high war exhaustion. And he's in civil war. Already in civil war. His decadence is low though, but there you go. Three stab hits sent. He's out, so one more stab hit. There's no way he sieges out in time. This is going to be a stab hit. What is he stab hitting for? Max money war reps. Here we didn't look at was the player in Congo. Who gave himself the name Congolese yeah, ideas. Congo. These aren't Congo ideas. These are these guys' ideas. And he made them Congolese ideas to confuse us. But he did reform Congo, which gives him access to the Congo mission tree, which gives him uh, African frontiers, which is Siberian frontiers, but in Africa. So we have another player here. He's expanding. There was supposed to be a Kilwa player, but he didn't show. So what can we do? Um, unfortunate. Organizing for a week for players not to show. It's always agony. And in the new world, the Kendom is still expanding, guys. The Kendom is still expanding. Caliphate. Caliphate of England already making 40 ducat incomes, followed by the Order of Joan Arc. Sweden reformed. He does have the unique ideas with the northern ideas, the Iron Fleet, plus two naval combat bonus. 20 morale damage, minus 10 tech cost. Max Hossa attrition plus eight. The Greyjoys. Oh, it's a, it's a another Game of Thrones reference. The Northern Lords. The North remembers how winter southern or outsider has made fun of us. Army, army tradition decay. With the old gods fading out, we have to accept our faith. What is this guy? Norse? We're in our rehost. We can see Bengal has uh, dev yes, so I'm much gonna... already. It's funny that a lot of people pick stuff like Shinto. So we have like a Shinto African nation with... Uh, not Austrian culture, despite his name. With 7.5 discipline, permanent cost spell against neighboring heathens and heretics. Plus one colonial blues, uh, uh, 10 core cost creation. Yearly inflation reduction, global settler increase, recruitment time, admiral cost, naval attrition, and land force limit. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does here. Of course, there's also Malian exile, which is to his north. Are they allied with one another? They are. So they are coordinating, working together. The, he has the mill tactics plus 0.1, core cost minus 20, gold depletion chance minus 50, max promoted cultures plus 40, 4, leader siege plus 1, minimum autonomy in territories minus 20, the spark speed. Recruitment time and center of trade cost and then blockade impact on siege. So 
kind of a weird combination of ideas compared to this guy. I kind of like uh, Austrian and, and Africa's ideas more than Mali Exiles. We're gonna have to see how it goes. Barbie Land's still in this player war. It is a 1v1. He has walked all the way across. And Barbie Land just lost another battle. So there you go. Another lost battle. Not looking good for Barbie Land for his expansion into East Africa. I think this was where he wanted to expand into. Of course, having the plus 1.5 goods produced would be insane on gold mines. Curry already getting carved up. The the Watchers of the Wall really haven't expanded at all ever since consolidating this area. I don't know what his next move is going to be. And I still don't know why he's Korean culture. If someone can tell me why he picked Korean culture, I would love to know. He's also Jewish faith. He's got all the faith power things activated. I think, yeah, church power and faith power stack together. So that's why the player did this. You'd expect this to only work for Protestant, but it also works for other religions that have faith power. Like, I think it works Anglican as well. Good for, I don't know how to pronounce this, Gudagogo Mendioga. Not looking good for him. Funny that a lot of the ideas that repeated or are similar to each other are next to each other. Like, this guy has minus 10 dev cost next to the Bengal who has minus 20 dev cost modifier. By the way, let's take a quick look at Bengal's... Uh, uh, dev clicks, uh, 257. He did take a lot of loans, 18 loans, 3,000 ducat loans to upgrade all of his trade centers right away. You can see he already did. I didn't even think about it, but this guy went Andalusian culture, so he gets Andalusian government, uh, holy orders. Does that mean these guys also have holy orders? They do. Does this guy have holy orders? He also does, but he doesn't own a single state in its entirety. This one will be rehosted every Tuesdays at 10 a.m. PST, which is 7 p.m. CET, Central European Time. Um, and it gets rehosted, and I will be broadcasting it live on Twitch. Of course, I will also be uh, uploading on YouTube every single session. So if you don't want to watch the Twitch, you can just wait for the YouTube video. However, if you want to get an uncut full VOD, you can watch it on Twitch. The VOD is up for three months after being uh, posted. So three months after August 29th, if you're watching this in the future. Uh, or you can watch it live. You can join the chat, talk to the chat. You can do TTS for 20 bits, which is 20 cents bit, uh, TTS. We've got some funny TTS. By the way, Barbie Land just got pushed back here. He's probably going to need another Merc. Uh, but yeah, you can do Trump text to speech. You can do my own voice as text to speech. I made my own voice as a text to speech. GP list, it's Bengal on top. The next player after that is Calfit of England, who did just expand even more into the British Isles, now has to wait for truces. After that, it's White, which is in China. So definitely did one of the better drafts. You can see he has 20 ICA, 25 manpower accepted range, 20 colonial range, 20 production density, 20 movement speed, which is amazing in Africa, by the way. 15 recover army morale, monarch admin skill, 10 heavy ship combat ability, tolerance for the heretic, heretics, native uprising chance. What, what religion did he chose? He chose fetishist, which is interesting. But as Congo, he can get the event to turn Catholic at any moment. Thing is really coming in clutch. This is probably one of the best nodes already. 17.4 value in the node. That's more than Malika. This player war is continuing. Let's see the debt of the players. Barbie Land is sitting at 3.6k debt. Meanwhile, uh, Gidongo, I can't pronounce that, has 1,500. So definitely Barbie Land is losing a lot more from this war. And he is the aggressor, so you do expect that to happen. But uh, was it necessary for him to go into East Africa without fully consolidating this region? I mean, he kind of did. There's still Mahara that exists. But it probably is a good idea to try to get control of the Gulf of Aden since normally the player here would go for Hormuz. But since the player started in Hormuz, the Yugoslavia player... Oh, it's bugged. It says Persian ideas. It's supposed to say Yugoslavian ideas. I mean, the description will remind us that this was Yugoslavia. He still has Joseph Tito as his ruler. His heir died, though. Goods produce as well on there. But this this England's going to be so rich. With the one goods produced on England, that's uh, so insane. I think this node, yeah, it's this is the highest value node. Almost 40 ducat node. Of course, Order of Joan Arc is benefiting from that, too. And once Order of Joan Arc gets their ship trade power, it's going to be so hard for the England player to hold the trade as they don't have any ideas for holding trade. They have ideas for producing, they have ideas for naval quality, they have ideas for some qual military quality, not that much honestly. Plus five merc discipline and minus five morale damage received is not really that much. Back to expanding, he has to keep expanding to keep his uh, horde unity up. Almost has full aristocratic ideas, still doesn't have access to his cap fire. Like I said, maybe picking a horde wasn't the best idea because a horde uh, units don't get uh, a fire pips until tech 18. If he does 
if he does become another nation, I think because he's Indian culture, he will become... I think his units chain change to... Um, if we see here, monarchy. I think he changes to Chinese units. I don't know what the cap fire... Actually, we can look here. Does this guy have Chinese units? Yeah, he does. Yeah, actually, they get uh, fire pips at tech 10. So Harad might be a good idea to reform out of Horde. I know he went Horde Unity here, and he also doesn't get the shock bonus from his Cav, but it will make his Cav fire more impactful. Mare Nordstrom expanding here. Is this a player war? No, it's not. I, uh, he has to be careful, Potato Crusader. Potato Crusader is the one with 10 discipline modifier, so definitely quite scary if you're the neighbor of him. Land still suffering in this war. Looks like it's turned into a death war for him as he's half his loan cap. 4,000 ducats of debt. Compared to the 2,000 ducats of debt that the Ethiopia player is taking. I'm not really sure if he can win this one, Barbie Land, but, you know, he's committed this much. And he's walking across. Wayfarers and Mamluks have given him mill access. This time in China, we were saying how the Manchu player is going to have a really good time in this game. Drafted really good. Is in a really good region. It was really tough for the China players to uh, collaborate, but they should be working together. And actually, he's abandoned his ally AI. AI is alone here with a low income against Manchu. This is really tough for him. Manchu's coming in here with 31 units. For some reason, he has elephant pips, probably because he chose those pips. Or the look of them. Elephants, Manchu. I don't know where they got the elephants from. And Barbie Land was stab hitted out of this war. He's making 30 ducats of income. So getting out of this debt is not impossible, but it's... This is really rough, man. 15 ducats in interest. Was it really the play to uh, attack when you have plus 1.5 goods produced? Don't you just wait for uh, production buildings and just build all of these production buildings and make an insane amount of income? I don't know. Right now he has zero workshops. And he can't afford workshops in the first place. But if he was able to just build those, I think he would have been a lot better economic position to start a war. Probably not a good idea to try to go for the war early on. Probably saw that Gedoyo Man... I can't pronounce his name, but the Ethiopian player didn't have any boats. And I think he's going for the truce break. Oh, no. See that Japan has been unified now. He is the Shogun. He can form Japan and keep his color. I prefer this purple color to the base Japan color. We have Uncon. Rip. AI has lost in the north. And Barbie Land lost in Ethiopia. So now he's walking around the entire strait again. Oh my god. Was this really the play? Was this really the play, Barbie Land? You could be making one duck at workshops right now. And here we go, walking around uh, walking around again. Yeah, he's got two 666s. Six, six, and the, f the next one has got Strict and Reformist. Absu Habibi the Imperishable. Yes, I am Imperishable. Oh, their last name is just the Imperishable. Okay. Alright. Nice one. And yeah, that's the end of Fourth Rome. I think that's our seventh player dead. Now went across the strait. Not across, but around it, rather. Will he be able to win another battle? I don't know. He just won one. Or the English Channel has begun. It's the English Caliphate has declared war on the, owner, the Order of Joan Arc. Is anyone going to help him? It seems that no one has joined the call for aid against him. Who declared this war? It was... The Feminist Conquest of Calais. So it was the Order of Joan Arc that went for this. Order of Joan Arc is struggling already. Minus 99 war, war score already. They can enforce. This is not good for Order of Joan Arc, but his land is high dev. So how much can the English Caliphate really take? And he does have prestige from land battles in the five discipline. But it seems that the, uh, the, Engl uh, the, the mercenaries, 5% mercenary, actually he's crazy. The, the only quality that England has, the English Caliphate, is 5 discipline of uh, mercs. And it was enough to contest the Order of Joan Arc, which does have the unique government reform. And now it's negative 88 war score as rebels just took a province or something. I don't know what happened. It went from negative 99 to negative 88. Oh, uh, the Unoterranium has joined. And now they're mobilizing together against the English Caliphate. But will they be able to take more? I think doing this war was such a bad idea. You would need naval dominance, which he can't even get as the English Caliphate is controlling the seas with his 20% combat ability. What was the idea here? To take Calais and then what? It wouldn't even be enough war score. Egger still with no coast. I mean, he's still away from his raiding coast uh, idea. So maybe he'll get a coast by the time he gets that. Maybe not. 
Either way, uh, well, if he does get it, it will be a really good boost to his income if he's able to raid Coast, because you'll be able to raid everyone. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> he, he, he went infrastructure first when he has religious warfare, the triple manpower increase in religious wars. So, not really sure what the idea is there. I'm not really sure what the idea is there because, um, yeah, he can't really get the triple manpower. And yes, it does give you triple max manpower when you deck a religious war. But this is a player war here against Chessland. Ninja is Zerastian, so he can get the holy sites from being Zerastian. And he also can upgrade uh, this monument right here, which can give him 10 discipline later on in the game. Reacher now in a war against Denmark, fighting for Pomerania. Sweden and Denmark are fighting together. Of course, these are still custom nations. It's Jewish, Denmark, and North Sweden fighting against the creature Catholics. Oh, and Lubeck is fighting here too? No, they're not. Uh, I was about to say, if the Hanseatic League was going to fight, it's going to be pretty strong. And uh, speaking of uh, Hanseatic League, he did form the Hanseatic League, uh, keeping his unique ideas, but now he gets the insane mission tree that does allow him to get gold in his capital. American Frontier player going crazy. Oh my god. How much development is he? 369? That's not our highest development player. But that's pretty crazy. Actually, it's all players in the top A except for Poland. That is not a player. White in China. So maybe that's why he's like, oh, I'm not going to help AI. Maybe they did do a deal for South and West, uh, South and North China. Maybe. No idea if that happened. But then followed by Bengal. Who, let's check his dev clicks chat. Da -da 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 -da. He has 332 dev clicks. Oh. <laughs> 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 And then Teslin Society, Teslian Society, which is our Castile player. Surprisingly, we didn't see a Castile Morocco war, uh, like you normally see first session. But it seems both players are uh, content content with what they have. Of course, the Morocco player is the one with 20 morale of armies, and it's funny because the player with 15 morale of armies is Castile. It's really funny how like a lot of the similar ideas are next to each other. Like, they've been over next to each other so many times. With the stab hits for the land, there was a stab hit bug, which is why they were saying that the, he's cheating. It's not a cheat, though. It's just a known bug that is in EU4 MP. We're going to have to give Joan d'Arc uh, okay, some save edits. The is actually expanding into Mexico. It's an interesting question. Do they get the bonus from completing colonies? It seems they do. Yeah, so the Kendom does get the bonus. Colonial bo boost does work on Siberian Frontiers. That's some knowledge that I didn't know. Now we know. Plus one colonial boost works on Siberian Frontiers, guys. Interested in the Kendom. What idea? What uh, trade goods is he getting? He's getting a lot of wool. Not really the best. A lot of uh, uh, livestock. Also not really the best until later when you get manpower, uh, soldier's sol sol household. And two gold. I mean, eh, it's okay. It's This is not really the best region for colonizing in this stage of the game. You really want to be over here. If you're over here with uh, Siberian Frontiers, oh my god, it would be even more crazy. There's just player wars going on everywhere. As Mali has now turned on his ally, Austria and Africa. With Morocco on his side. Why is Morocco here? What does he gain? No idea. Is this Austria, Congo? Is the Congo player helping? Congo player has what? declined the call to help. For Austria and Africa, what is he going to do? He's taken max loans already as he's getting sieged. And why is Morocco here? That's a great question. What is Mor Why is Morocco here? Maybe they did one of those freaky uh, deals where it's like, I'll help you take on Austria and Africa and then you help me against Castile. Uh, in my opinion, those are really weird deals, but you know, players do them. You can't stop players from doing those deals. Meanwhile, the North German War is continuing as now there's almost 80k on the side of Creature. Creature's capital is... What is Creature's capital? Konigsberg. So he's not getting his plus one dice roll here as it's only plus one dice roll for owned provinces and combat bonus and terrain of capital, which does stack with combat bonus of terrain capital over here. So he could potentially get like plus three. The war continues as there's another battle about to take place. Oh, he scorched the province. He's now going for the war goal. Probably a good idea. Nope, he's staying in place. Both players have decided to stay in place. Both of them attritioning. And now White is now turning on his, uh, his ally, AI. And that's going to be another player death in AI. Rip AI. Amir Erdam Ramazangulu. I don't know if that's like some Mimi name, but that's the name of Saxony's ruler. Let's look at a quick religions in the HRE. Uh, this is, looks so funky. 
Another one battle for Barbie Land, and Ethiopia looks like he's gonna bankrupt. So maybe this was worth in the end. But so is Barbie Land. Barbie Land is on the verge of bankruptcy. Both players on the verge of bankruptcy. He can take one more loan on Ethiopia. Barbie Land's now rushing the war goal, so he doesn't bankrupt. He might have to take corruption. Yes, he's already taking corruption. He can sell titles if he deals with the rebels, which is what he's doing. I just realized this. The Watchers of the Wall have like no money-making ideas. All their ideas are focused around the defense of their land. It's true LARP. And of course, here on this channel, we approve of the LARP. The African Rumble has now turned sides as Congo has arrived. As White had crashed. White was in, is in a player war against Emia. Could he stand a chance? I think he has a better chance than the other Chinese as he does have a pretty good income. Uh, both players with... Ooh, uh, Manchu has a bigger force limit though. But Emiya does have minus 20% shock damage received. Which of course is really good against Manchu. But the session ends here as White did crash. So we're not going to see the end of the Barbie war with Ethiopia. I think Ethiopia once he realizes how close uh, uh, each other are going to bankrupt. It might be the end for Ethiopia. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to continue this next week. Oh, I hate the similar colors, dude. They're literally the same color, huh? It's like one shade off. And yeah, we're going to have to end right here. That's the end of this session. We ended Habibi's Daycare Session 1. Next week, same time, is going to be Habibi's Daycare Session 2. Quick check on Kendom in the New World. He's gaming, guys. Kendom is gaming. Now let's look at our top five player GPs, starting with White, who has development of 733 total development and an income of almost 50. Next is Manchu with development of 667. Then it's Kemri with a development of 583. And number four, we have Persia, starting as Yugoslavia with development of 570. And finally, it's Bengal with a development of 493. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Of course, this is going to be a weekly series, so uh, look out for the next part next week around the same time. And of course, special thanks to my patrons, Lumina, Leonard Craig, Lime, Amir, Mason and Druska, Zorovia, Fluxy, Anderson, Pina, Chogus, Rasvidias, RBR, and Will. And of course, Fabulous Snail. If you want to directly support me monetarily, you can using my Patreon. Link is in the description and there are some cool perks involved. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, check out another one of my video. I think you'll enjoy it. And of course, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet.